Good morning, sisters and brothers. Morning. I, would like to, I would like to reflect with you this morning on the theme, remember your story. It is based on the Old Testament reading in Isaiah 40. Let us pray. Heavenly Father and God, we thank you for your old, old and wonderful story. Thanks for making it our story. Jesus' birth, his life on earth, his death and resurrection is a story to tell. A story that brings to us the gift of salvation. Thank you for the opportunity to assemble as we are, to remind ourselves of this wonderful story and to wrap ourselves around it. In the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. We are here this morning, we are together, because of a story that we have. The British writer, Tahir Shaw, describes stories as a communal currency of humanity. Some scholars claim that the human species thinks by metaphors and learns through stories. We are a story people. Every individual, every family, and every people have a story. And believers have a story in their walk with their God. Our stories of God's goodness to us are sacred. They have power to challenge us, to comfort us, and to enrich our lives and strengthen our faith. To lose sight of our story can bring misery to lose sight of our story can result in us being knocked down. But to remember our story can be uplifting. Our stories value the years we live. Stories are important for our spiritual direction on this road of life. We must remember our story. President Bill Clinton, in his book, My Life, recounts a visit he made to his adopted grandfather while he was president. His adopted grandmother was at the time confined to a home, suffering with Alzheimer's. Clinton describes in his book, how his grandfather related to him that on occasions when he visited his wife, she didn't even know him. In compassion, Clinton remarked to his grandfather, it must be very difficult for you. And he said it was the first time in his experience that he saw tears in his grandfather's eyes. But on saying that, the old man replied, yes, it's difficult, 
But in this life, you sign up for the whole load. And most of it has been good. Clinton makes the point that every person has a story. Every life has a story. And that the experience of his grandparents was a part of their story. It is our individual story. How in our childhood, we sat in Sunday school and learned the golden rule from our teachers. It is our family story. When as a family, we're faced together challenges of illness, illness or death of a member, firmly believing that, that God knows, that God understands, and that he would not give us more than we can bear. It is our national story. When we as a people struggle, bonded together in the face of some disaster, such as a hurricane or earthquake or a pandemic, collectively relying on the Lord's mercy to see us through. It is our story as a church. When each week we come, come together to worship and bring in our individual story, wrapping ourselves around God's unfailing story. This story is God's story, but it is also ours. Our value of our weekly communal worship is that we are constantly reminded of God's story. And so we are less likely to forget our own story as we walk with God. The book of Isaiah is centered on the Babylonian exile, which began somewhere about 586 BC when King Nebuchadnezzar destroyed Jerusalem and the temple and enslaved most of its people. The exile ended in about 539 BC when King Cyrus of Persia allowed the Jews to return home and to rebuild their temple. Isaiah makes it clear that Nebuchadnezzar was God's instrument to punish the Jewish people for their sins. And that Cyrus will be God's instrument to set them free, to redeem them. In our text, Verse 21, Isaiah asked four rhetorical questions. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth. He poses these questions to remind them in exile that they have known God. These questions were asked rhetorically, to remind him that they have heard about God from the scriptures. They know him through the prophets and that they know him through their own history. In other words, the prophet reminds them that they have a story on which they must hang their faith. And it is a story that they would do well to remember. Isaiah is speaking to a people in captivity, beaten down by hopelessness and despair. He's speaking to a people demoralized with the destruction of their temple by a mere mortal 
whose power is not comparable to the power of their God. In such circumstances, they must be left to wonder if their God has forgiven them, forgotten about them. The exiled people, they know the story of God. They know the story of their God. They know their story. They are capable of reciting the historical demonstration of God's power. They know that God created human life in the last day of creation. And that God saw everything that he made was good. Genesis 12, verse 1 to verse 3. They know about the birth of Israel and the four centuries of slavery that the descendants of Jacob endured in Egypt. They know about Moses and how God used him to free his people from bondage. They know how the Israelites sinned in the wilderness and were forced to endure 40 years wandering in that land. They know God led his people through the wilderness by a pillar of smoke by day and fire by night. The message of God's people and his grace are not only to be found in the scriptures, but in each chapter of the life of a people. Before captivity, Israelites had a story. The story of God's goodness and his grace to them. But in captivity, they are at risk of losing that story. In captivity, patience wins. And this often leads to hopelessness. One of the challenges of a people in captivity is to maintain their story. We are all inclined to forget our story when we are in captivity. It takes a good memory to recall our story when we are battered and bruised by captivity. In the captivity of trials and illnesses, we are very often tempted to wonder if God has forgotten us. I'm sure I have shared this experience with you before, but I'm going to ask you to indulge me because it, it bears the point that I wish to make. The late Reverend Guy Roberts was a Moravian minister in Jamaica. And some years ago, we were both hospitalized in the university hospital. Upon being discharged from the hospital, I visited with him He was still there. We prayed together. And then he, he shared with me the experiences he was having with his illness and the challenges that he was facing. He said at one time, he found himself thinking as though he was talking to the Lord. And these, as I recall, were the words. I have worked for you. I have evangelized for you. I have prayed to you for those who were sick. And he said to me, just at the time when he completed that trend of thought. He was about to say, and look at my condition. He realized that he was about to lose his faith. And so he pulled back. He recoiled 
from the brink of that terrible failure. Yes, we can lose our faith. And thus, the beautiful story of God's goodness and his grace, we are at risk of losing that if we should lose our story. We have experienced his goodness and his grace on so many occasions, not the least of which is on each Sunday when we join together in worship. Isaiah is speaking to a captive people who's, who's, who are at serious risk of losing their faith, of falling away from their faith and their story of God's goodness to them. In captivity, they are far removed from God's power. They are not seeing his power visible in their lives as they were before captivity. All that they are seeing now, all that they are witnessing in captivity is the power of the king. It is this power that keeps them in captivity. It is this power that is before them from day to day. And the power of the king cannot be compared to the power of their God. But Isaiah speak, speaks words that ring with comfort and hope. The hope is that exile is coming to an end. This God whom you have known is about to visit you again. He's going to visit you in his unfailing mercy. And he's about to free you from the bondage of captivity. The story of God working for them in the past needs to be reminded. It needs to be remembered by them. And the story needs to be told to them again. Their God has been powerful for them in the past and will be faithful to them again as he was in the beginning. He will be faithful and powerful from the beginning to the end. They needed to be reminded of the circumstances that resulted in their enslavement. They needed to be reminded that Israel has suffered before and that suffering is not the end. God has, has freed them in the past. He has redeemed them in the past. And he has brought them in the past from captivity. They needed to be reminded that God is about to do all these things again for them. Have you not heard? Have you been told from the beginning? Haven't you understood from the foundation of the earth? For us, we must remember our story. The story of the Jewish people is also our story. Our story is even stronger than, than theirs. We know that Christ died for our sins. They didn't know that. Or in any event, they have never accepted that. Our story is that Christ is dead in his death, he brought to us the gift of salvation. To lose the memory of our story is, in the word of one writer, is to make us profoundly impoverished. Our story is a story of a faithful God walking with his people who believe in him and who trust him. In spite of captivity, of the difficulties of life, is a story on which we can rely. Is a story 
on which we hang our faith. And it's a story that we use on a daily basis to reinforce and to renew that faith. Are we at risk of forgetting our story? We dare not forget the story of God's love. We may be tempted by unfavorable circumstances, by the difficulties of life, but we must patiently wait on the Lord as we hold firmly to our story. Our sorrows are more easily borne when we are able to put our sorrows in the story of God's faithfulness. Just like the Jewish people in captivity, we are called to remember our story. We may have to wait long. God is patient and he's calling on us to wait patiently on him. Not to lose heart by becoming impatient because this God, this mighty and powerful and faithful God will never give up on us as long as we are faithful to his story. We must not only remember his story, we must live the story and we must be able to tell others of it. The hymn writer, Catherine Hankey, reminds us, tell me the old world story. Tell me the old old story. Tell me the old old story of Jesus and his love. Let us today pray and vow to remember our story. Remember the story of God's goodness. Remember the story of his patience and the story of God's grace. Amen.